on the plains of Arafat Standing proud beside my brother Silent at Mustafa بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam In the previous episode we learned about how to determine how to begin the month of Dhul Hijjah and the other months in Islam which are closely related with some important acts of worship In today's episode inshallah we will be continuing to do the same with our beloved and dear Sheikh Dr. Haytham Al Haddad from UK Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Sheikh, in the previous episode, we learned about some of the rulings pertaining to how to begin the month of Dhul Hijjah and the other months of Islam. But there are certain questions posed by the people. From among those questions related to this is that, is it required or is it valid that the physical sighting of the moon should involve the naked eye? Or can some instruments or equipments be used like a telescope? Now today, alhamdulillah, in the 21st century, we have powerful telescopes that which can sight the moon. So is it sighting by the naked eye, which is a requirement? Or can we utilize such equipments and instruments which helps us to sight the moon? Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. First of all, let me just go and visit what we have mentioned previously. We said that the Prophet ﷺ said, start your fasting when you all fast. End your fasting when you all end your fasting. And the day of Adha is when you all do your Adha or sacrifice. Now, if the countries are divided like this, then it might be that Saudi Arabia might decide for the Adha on a particular day because they are in charge of Hajj. Now, not all countries follow that officially yes not all countries follow that why because the authorities in those countries maybe they have a political problem with saudi arabia they don't want to follow saudi arabia or they don't believe in the religious affiliation of saudi arabia or they believe genuinely that sharia says each place or each remote country should have its own sighting yeah? Yes. This is a valid... Well, the local moon sighting. Yes, the local moon sighting. And this is a very valid opinion. Because, you know, in Hadith Quraib, the servant of Ibn Abbas, he traveled from Sham and they started Ramadan on a particular day, Saturday. And when he traveled to Mecca, he was asked, when did you start? And he said, we started on Saturday. Why? Because we sighted the moon. He said, no, here... We will continue fasting until we sight our own new moon. So the scholars use this hadith that if there are remote countries, each country should follow its own local sighting. Now, see, I strongly believe that the hadith of Quraib, this hadith of Quraib, was applied there because they have poor communication or they did not have communication to know when the moon was sighted in that country. But if there are facilities for any part of the Muslim world now to know when the moon was sighting in that country, then we should be united and follow that. Because the Prophet ﷺ addressed us all. Asawm yawma tasumun, all. All of us. Not one particular country. So if that is possible, then we should go for that. But Unfortunately, this is not possible. Although we have the facilities and the communication that enable us to be aware of the start of the month within seconds. Within seconds of the start in another country. But because of political problems, that is not possible. Now, does this mean that the start of the month of the Hijjah in Saudi Arabia as we gave the example in the previous episode, might be Tuesday, and the start of the Hijjah in India might be Monday. Is that possible, Sharia-wise? Is it possible that the people in Mecca doing their Arafah, and we saw it in TV, 
that Arafah is Wednesday. And we started our Arafah earlier here in India. Is this possible that we are fasting today? Why are we fasting today? Because it is what? It is Arafah for us because we started the month on Monday. A day before. A day before. So our Arafah will be what? Tuesday. Tuesday. Our Arafah will be Tuesday here in India. So we fasted that because it is recommended to fast the day of Arafah. And then the next day, which is our celebration as what? As Eid for us in India. No, people in Saudi Arabia are fasting for their Arafah or people in Mecca, they are standing for their Arafah. Can this happen or not? This can happen. If your country is not following Saudi Arabia, you should follow your country. You should not come up with a new formula to follow Saudi Arabia by yourself other than your country or to have a separation between Arafah and the Eid. No. The Prophet Sallallahu said, fast when you all fast. And fasting when you all. All means all of the Ummah or all in your place. It can be applied on this and this. Moreover, if I say to myself, no, I will follow Saudi Arabia. As an individual. As an individual. And the community here, the country here, most of them, they follow their own local moon sighting or even their own calculation. And for them, the beginning of the month is not a Tuesday. The beginning of the month is one day earlier. And hence, Arafah for them will be on Wednesday rather than Thursday. And the Eid for them will be what? Will be Wednesday. Wednesday. But if I am following Saudi Arabia, the Eid for me will be what? Thursday. Will be Thursday. So now when they perform Eid here, which is Wednesday, I don't perform with them. Okay, let us say that it is fine. What about tomorrow? which is the Eid for me, and it is the second Eid for them. Where am I going to pray my Eid? Is it clear? That's clear. It is not possible. Where am I going to pray my Eid? Should I establish Eid by myself? It doesn't work. Okay? Basically, it's a community worship. It's not an ah, individual yes. in Faradi worship. Yes, that Mashallah. is a very good summary for it. This time, this issue of beginning of the month of the beginning of the month, ending the month, and in particular some activities that are related to the beginning of the month, they are communal, societal activities. You as an individual, you cannot do them by yourself. That's why many scholars said that if the person, if there is a person who sighted the moon by himself, he went to the authorities and he told them that, listen, I sighted the moon today. For whatever reason, they did not accept his testimony. For whatever reason. And they said, for you, you said that you sighted the moon, which means that tomorrow is the Eid. Or tomorrow is Ramadan. No, 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 no. According to our calculation, the Eid starts the day after tomorrow. Ramadan starts the day after tomorrow. Hajj starts the day after tomorrow. If they say to him this, yeah, then what will happen? Shall he, if it is in the case of Ramadan, shall he fast by himself alone? Because he sighted the new moon and the Prophet wasallam said, Sumu, fast when you sight the new moon. Is the scenario clear? Yes, it's clear. I sure. hope it is clear. Mm -hmm. I hope it's clear to the audience to as the well. To the audience. This is the question. So can this person say, well, I have cited the new moon myself, and you, okay, you are excused to follow the imam, the leader, etc., etc. But as for me, I will follow my own sighting. As for me, I will follow my own, what, sighting. So for me, you do your Eid in one day, and I will do my Eid in another day. Is this acceptable? No. Most of the scholars said that it is not acceptable. 
They said, even if you want to fast, you do it secretly. You do not declare it to the other people. You do people. not declare it. You don't say to people, by the way, I have seen the moon and wallahi, I have seen it. So, the month of Ramadan it starts on Monday. It doesn't start on Tuesday. Why? Because a Tuesday is based on calculation. Monday is based on moon sighting and wallahi, I have sighted the moon, so you should follow me. He can't say this. You want to fast by yourself, fast by yourself. But don't create fitna. In conclusion, if the vast majority of Muslims of India decided the beginning of the month of Dil Hijjah against the decision of the beginning of Dil Hijjah in Saudi Arabia, and I am now living in India, I'm not in these Indians. Yeah, because the people who go to Saudi Arabia, they are not Saudis, but they have to follow the authorities of what? The Saudi. Of the Saudi. Not because they are Saudi or the authorities or, yeah? Because you are with the people there, of that land. Because you are with the people of that land. And the Prophet ﷺ said, yes, Fast when course. you all fast. Okay, Sheikh, Jazakallah Khair. It was more details added to the same point that which we were discussing. That is how to determine the month and what are the different scenarios that which can arise in a Muslim's life in how to determine the sighting of the moon in different lands. Inshallah, we'll continue speaking on the same, but after a short break. Crying out to the heavens on the plains of Arafat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have been discussing with Sheikh Haytham al-Haddad about the different scenarios that which can arise about the sighting of the moon in different lands. Yes, Sheikh, you were telling us about yeah. it. So in conclusion, if you are living in a country and they decide for the beginning of the month of the Hijjah, go with them, even if it is different from Saudi Arabia. Full stop. And I don't think that there will be a scholar who disagrees with this. Okay, so this chapter should be closed, yeah, and it should be clear for people. Now, some people might ask, what about if there is no singular authoritative representative of Islam and Muslims in this country? Like it is the case in most of the European countries. We don't have a single authority to represent Islam and Muslims. And I doubt that you have something like this in India. I know that in India you have Majlis al-Ulama. Yes, we have different committees, but Alhamdulillah, with respect to the majority, we have a committee called as the Hilal Committee here in yes. India, yes. and they make an announcement through the capital city of India, New Delhi, and that is what the majority of the Muslims follow to maintain the unity here in India. Yeah. So if that is the case, then follow the majority of Muslims, even if you are not convinced with the criteria, even if their criteria is not moon sighting, is calculation. But they have satisfied the main criteria, which is what? To fast with the people. To fast with the people. That's a very good discussion. Jazakallah. Jazakallah and wallahi, it is the most practical one. And you will not be seen odd. And you will not create fitna among people. Yeah? In some countries, I heard that some brothers are moving and hiding, yeah, and establishing their Eid prayer in somewhere in the desert. Now, can this happen? Can this happen? In fact, this will create a big fitna against even your da'wah, because when the vast majority of Muslims are celebrating their Eid and praying their Eid, and making takbir, etc., etc., and then they see you not doing this. Why? I'm fasting today. Why, Akhi? Because tomorrow is the Eid. And then tomorrow you are doing your Eid by yourself, secretly praying in one of the areas. It doesn't work like It, it this. shows disunity amongst the Muslims and it is yeah. not good for your Dawah work yes. amongst the non-Muslims as well. Not at all. Not at all. There is a common scenario that some people now start to say that the Eid of Al-Abha who said that it should start after Arafah? What does that mean? They came up with an idea that, okay, we fast Arafah 
with Saudi Arabia because they are in charge of Hajj. Okay? But we do our Eid according to our local Eid. How does this work? What about if according to Saudi Arabia, as we said in the previous example, Arafah is what? Arafah is Wednesday. And the Eid is what? Thursday. Here in India, the Arafah is what? Tuesday. We said the Tuesday. So on Tuesday, you will fast as if it is Arafah. And in Saudi Arabia, Arafah is Wednesday. But normal circumstances, Sheikh, we usually sight the moon one day after Saudi okay, Arabia. Okay, I'm just giving an example. We'll come to so that. So this is just that. for an example yeah. for the audiences. Yeah. But in reality, India and because the Indian subcontinent, the since it is on the eastern side, we sight the moon Before. primarily one day after uh, Saudi one, Arabia. Yeah. One day after. This yeah. is just for the example for the audiences. Yeah. I'm just mentioning as an example. So, in Saudi Arabia, we said that they are starting their month on Tuesday, which means that Arafah will be on Wednesday. Yeah? So, I will fast Arafah with them on what? On Wednesday. Yes. But Wednesday will be what? Will be the Eid here. So, there will be contradiction. Okay, let us take the other scenario. The other scenario is Saudi Arabia started the month on Tuesday. We started here in India. We started the month on Wednesday. So for us, Arafah is what? Is Thursday. Yes? Yes. And for Saudi Arabia, Arafah is what? Wednesday. Okay? And for Saudi Arabia, Eid is what? Thursday. Thursday. And for us here, Eid is what? Friday. Friday. So some people say, fast Arafah with Arafah in Saudi Arabia, which is what? Fast what? Arafah on Wednesday. Wednesday. And do your Eid with your country, which is what? On Friday. On Friday. This is the most odd opinion that I came across. So my Arafah, yeah, for one single person, my Arafah is Wednesday. I'm fasting on Wednesday. Obviously after 9 comes 10. So if I am fasting 9, which is Arafah, then after Arafah is 10. After 9 is 10. 10 for me is not 10. Because I'm celebrating my Eid when? With my country here yeah, on, Friday. on Friday. Now, does it work? It doesn't work. What about Thursday? What do we say it? What do we say? It is. Baina, baina. Baina, bain is like Mu'tazira? No. This is a wrong approach. This is a wrong approach. Arafah is the ninth, which means that the tenth is what? The tenth is Yawm al Nahr. Is Yawm al Nahr. So I fast, and tomorrow I have to my celebrate Eid my Eid, and I sacrifice. Yeah, full stop. Right. Even if we say, even if we go for this, I want to start my takbir, my ibadah, my yeah activities, because as we will see, inshallah, in the coming episode, the first ten days of the Hijjah, which is the topic of this series, are very virtuous. So every single second counts. Every single second counts. Some scholars said fasting one day in these 10 days of the Hijjah is equal to fasting 1,000 days outside those days. So it is very important then to determine when the month actually begins. I don't want to lose any day. That's correct. So I can't say, well, I will go with Saudi Arabia for fasting Arafah, but I will not do it, okay, for the Eid here. No. Khalas. You will be excused. As-sawmu yawma tasumun, al-fitru yawma tuftirun, wal-adha yawma tadahun. Qala al-tirmidhi. The tirmidhi, the one who recorded this hadith, wal-amalu ala hadha inda aktari ahli al-ilm, which means that it is the consensus, or like consensus, that the people of knowledge acted on this. That al sawmu wal fitru wal abha ma'a idam in nasi wa jumhurihim. 
you just follow what the majority the of majority of muslims in your if as we said if the whole ummah is united then with the whole ummah otherwise with your country or sometimes even with your cities for example in india yeah if india is scattered there is no single presentation for muslims in india as we see that there are some of the states that which have their own committees yes. for citing the moon some of the states out of the many states that which india yeah so what to do in this case if the muslims in your city for example delhi or in bombay here they are vast majority and the city if you are in the city as if you are in a country so when you fast you fast with the people yeah then follow that city because for example imagine in bombay there is a muslim who decided to go against the vast majority of muslims in bombay then is it possible for him to establish his own eid prayer and to be by himself not as an individual definitely not it is not okay so leave that opinion so if the country is united go for the country if the country is not united and the cities are big enough to act like countries then go for the city if you are living in a small town go for your town if the muslims are split around you but if most of the muslims in your country are following one direction but your own town only that town or very few are going against them then go with the vast majority of muslims in your country the last scenario what about if muslims in my country are divided why i am mentioning all these scenarios because yeah these scenarios these are something are that which we face in practical scenarios practical. we face them and people do ask them and mashallah peace tv now is and all over the world so there will be some people mashallah. watching us in africa in india in other countries so if muslims in your country were divided 60 40 if you can go with the vast majority go with the vast majority if you cannot go with the vast majority if you cannot identify the vast majority then just go with any party that is the majority in your locality jazakallah khairan sheikh mashallah we have learned about various scenarios that which we practically face in the world that which we live in today in different societies different cities different countries and alhamdulillah maybe after watching this episode much of your queries much of your questions must have been answered and inshallah we will discuss more such issues on the fiqh of the month of Dhul Hijjah and the virtues of the first 10 days of the month of Dhul Hijjah in the coming episodes until then wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh